I'm Pierce Alexander Lilholt, and if I know one thing, it's white fragility. That's right, I know all about white fragility. And some consider me to be an expert on white fragility. Others consider me to be the world's foremost expert on white fragility. Now, you're probably wondering, what does the world's foremost expert think about white fragility? Well, I resent it very much. <laughs> they, uh, the idea that white people are so fragile they can't talk about racism, I find that to be racist. <laughs> I find that to be a huge generalization. And I don't put myself in that category at all. I... I put myself in the category where I'm very comfortable talking about racism because I wholeheartedly disapprove of it. <laughs> I think it's, I just think it's dumb. It's just, a, it's, it's an endeavor for stupid people. I don't go around and start saying, hey, blonde people, they've got a leg up. They're sexy. Oh, yeah, you got some blonde hair. You have some advantages I don't have. Just did a nice fade there. That actually looks pretty good. All right. Yeah. I don't go around saying, hey, because of the color of your hair, you've had advantages. And maybe statistically speaking, there's been some blonde people who have, you know, gotten the job or whatever it was because color of their hair I tend to I tend to think that the best way to not be racist is judge somebody by the content of their character on an individual basis so as soon as you start saying white people and black people white people do this black people do that well then you sound nuts as soon as you start making such huge generalizations you're going to be wrong. You're going to be a dummy. You're going to be a dumb, dumb, dummy. <laughs> you don't want to be a dumb, dumb, dummy. That's what you don't want to be. Because then I would judge you. I will say I am prejudiced against dumb, dumb, dummies. If you're a dumb, dumb, dummy, you can get, 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 get out of the way. Because I don't want to have anything to do with dumb, dumb, dummies. But I do think that some people say, hey... We have different skin pigmentations, and therefore we're different. And you don't want to embrace those differences? Well, yes. That's why they say, oh, if you're colorblind, then you're racist too. Well, so then everybody's a racist? Is that what we're saying here? Because colorblindness is, well, it's kind of how it should be. People say, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say, oh, yeah, you know, white people were taught to just think, uh, there's, it doesn't matter what color you are. I mean, we're not blind, literally. So, yeah, we could see, hey, there's, we got different color skin. Cool, you know? Cool. Maybe uh, if you're black, you look better with a white hat on than I do. <laughs> but, but then, hey, I'm white. Maybe I look better with this dark hat on. Nice navy blue. I don't know. And I think we'd both look good with this hat on because it's pretty awesome. But... Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. People are afraid to talk about it. I think maybe because if you grew up learning certain ideologies or you grew up learning that if you grew up learning that racism was okay, you might feel like like mixing, you know. Being with black people in any way or white people, it depends who you are or whatever color, is wrong. And then you're going to feel this sense like, I'm doing something wrong by being with these different people. It's probably hard to overcome that feeling. I mean, it's a feeling. It's something you, you can't deny because you could hide it. You could go and say, oh, no, we're cool. Yeah, and smile. We're cool. Yeah, we're cool. But in your head, you're like, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. 
like, oh my God. Now that's, that's where the racism comes into it. So if you learned that, I wholeheartedly believe that you can unlearn that. You can unlearn that feeling. I mean, there's people who, um, who might've been claustrophobic and they're trained to go in, you know, into like very tiny shafts and do work in there. You know, those people, they might've came in there and said, Oh, I'm really uncomfortable going, going into this pipe, you know, to work on something. But then after they do it, Oh, you know, I'm totally comfortable with that. I feel very safe in that confined area or whatever it is. So it's about the opposite of that expanding your mind. This is a big, world it is a small world at the same time you know you never know who you're going to run into but it's it's big there's a lot of people on it they're all they all look different and people judge people on all sorts of different things might judge me on my funky hat or my cool glasses but you never know how that judgment's going to be it could be good could be bad these were choices though that i made and, and a lot of people compare racism to something like anti-Semitism where you're judging people on the religion that they chose. But that, that is a choice. I'm not saying you should ever be, you know, anti-Semitic or judging somebody and say, hey, you know, the religion you chose was wrong. So you're a dumb, dumb, dummy. You shouldn't do that because, I mean, in the, in the end of the day, any religion, you don't know which one's right or wrong. You might think you do, but you, you don't. <laughs> but you you do know that people didn't make the choice to be this color, this color, whatever color. They didn't make the choice to have blonde hair or blue eyes or whatever. Nobody made those decisions. So to judge somebody on something totally out of their control, that's rough. And I know people do, I know people like to judge people on a lot of just physical traits. Like if you have some jangled up teeth, people are like, this person is not smart. They got jangled teeth. It's like, no, maybe they just couldn't afford some braces because those are expensive. Or somebody's just gotten disfigured looking. Let me tell you, a lot of people are prejudiced against disfigured looking people. And, and that is, that's just not right. So I'd say when it comes to equality, that's saying you can't judge a book by the cover. I mean, you could, you could take a guess, but you, you're putting yourself in a very high risk position of being wrong. And if I know one thing about being wrong, it sucks. <laughs> you don't want to be wrong especially when it comes to judging somebody who might be awesome. So, so if you're going to judge somebody by the color of their skin, that's a huge, it's going to be huge generalization. That is just gonna, you've got a, you've got a big, kind of big margin for error on that one. I mean, you could just judge everybody and say, you know what? Most people are going to be stupid. <laughs> And then you're probably a safe bet on that one. But to say somebody's going to be a certain th way because of their skin color, now you going to be stupid. <laughs> so you don't want to, you don't want to run that risk. And, and the white fragility thing, I mean, that's, that's such a racist and offensive idea. It's people don't realize like when you're talking about race, this is not some new issue. This didn't just come up. White fragility didn't just get invented here, okay? There are people who are uncomfortable talking about race. Why? Because racism comes from all directions. So if you're white and you feel uncomfortable talking about race, maybe with black people or whoever, well, who's to say, who's to say who's right and wrong here? But what I will say, is it's all based on racism. I mean, it's, you're uncomfortable talking about race that, that I mean there's not too much of an interpretation on what is racist about that we're talking about gigantic generalizations and and people always come back and say oh color blindness you know you need to recognize black people are black white people are white and all this yes obviously but I don't need to think that 
every you know black person I've encountered has experienced slavery, for instance. And I don't need to look at every white person and say, this white person never experienced slavery because they could have. They could have been sex trafficked or who knows what. So, so to start making giant generalizations, it's just, it's a bad idea. And to say white fragility, whoever coined that term, they probably got a little bit of fragility themselves. I don't know if they're white or black, doesn't matter. I think to, to slap white on the front of that word made it somewhat offensive, as opposed to just fragility. Some people don't like talking about race. Other people have, I mean, the opposite is that some people are overly comfortable talking about race in a very, you know, racially biased, one-sided view that maybe a white person's an oppressor or maybe whatever the case is. And look, I'm not defending any racial pr position here. Racism is an all direction thing. Okay. It's not just, you're not just racist against somebody, unless you're really overtly grossly racist. Like I hate this group of people. It, it's that feeling. And if you're feeling uncomfortable because of differences, I think if you, you know, if you just, if you're cool with it, you embrace the differences because everybody's different. I mean, people do so many different things and they're from so many different places, backgrounds. Some people look different. I just think judging anybody on how they look is, is folly. It's just, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Like, if you're going to do that, it, there's no basis for that to translate to the content of anybody's character. There, There's nothing that says, hey, this person looks this way, therefore they're going to be like this. Unless it's a choice they made. Like, hey, here's this guy. He wears cut-off sleeve t-shirts and stupid hats. Well, you could judge me on that. You might not like people who wear hats like this. You might have met a bunch and they all had something in common. I made that choice, though. So, you look at these choices people make or how you're born. And if you judge people on what they look like, you got to relearn something. And if you, can un if you can learn it, you can unlearn it. So, if you, learned, if you learned to feel a certain way, you can unlearn that. Feel good about being with people who enjoy your company. And... Don't make massive, huge generalizations uh, based on huge populations of people because you're never going to be right. If you just say, oh, white people do this or all oh, black people do this, I mean, you, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You're not going to be right. I don't care what you say. Unless you say all white people are white, that's about it. That's the only thing all white people have in common is that they're white. All black people are black. Other than that, there is no, there's nothing that I can think of that, that they all have in common. It just, it doesn't exist. So if you want to go that route, well, we don't need to hang out. <laughs> I don't hang out with, uh, with racist people. It's just, um, I like to keep good company. So keep good company and be good company. So, you know, feel good around the people you're with because, if they want to be with you and you want to be with them, it doesn't matter what they look like. And I think that, you know, if everybody starts moving in that direction of, hey, let's not worry about, let's not worry about the issue. So you're still looking at it as an issue. You're not looking as an opportunity to embrace other people's differences. So let's get off the whole, it's an issue thing. Okay. I know a lot of people are going to have a problem with that. Well, if you have a problem with that, if you have a problem with embracing other people's differences and you want to look at it as an issue, leave a comment down below because honestly, I'm interested in what you got to say, but I'm all about embracing the differences and the, the variety is the spice of life. And let me tell you, I like a lot of spices. <laughs> oh yeah.